We've already discussed 10 things that don't make sense in TDS. However, there is still plenty of more things that we haven't discussed or, you know, have been touched at all. So here are five more things that don't make any sense. Number 10. And number five, we have the Pyro's fire damage thing. One of the things that literally doesn't make sense whatsoever is, you know, the Pyro's weapon is a flamethrower and it essentially does, well, fire damage to all enemy troops, I guess. However, the weird thing is, is that it damages also the molten fire enemies as well. But anyway, the Pyro actually damages the Inferno-ish troops in molten mode which is very 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 strange since it's kind of like using a water gun to hurt poseidon like it's that outlandishly weird a weapon or elements that you yourself are made from or you know have powers from or just use as a, what's it called as a weapon can actually hurt you yourself it's like a creation being killed by well it's created elements or something, I don't know. But it's very, very, very weird to where you will literally have to raise an eyebrow on how a pyro can essentially burn an inferno enemy with a flamethrower that actually deals damage to them and not like, I don't know, use like a pistol for them or something like that. Or maybe get out a fire extinguisher, you know, as like a little bit of a plan B. Number four. Walking into the number four spot is why exactly do the enemies, you know, the zombies or whatever, walk only on the path this is something that i just don't really get and i know i know it is a game there is some there has to be some sort of way or some sort of passage or something like that for enemies to go from left to right or straight forward to you know actually interact with the map that's how the whole concept of the game is enemies go on a path and they uh, and you have to essentially place down defenses around that path in order to essentially take them down before they reach the end of said path. However, you do really have to wonder why exactly this one path is the only thing they can walk on. Sure, it's like the path where zombies and stuff have to actually take in order to transverse around the map. However, there are also some other maps, like for an example, Wrecked Battlefield, I think that's its name, where there are these little trenches that pretty much take shortcuts throughout the map, and you kind of have to wonder why the zombies don't take those paths as well since they are literally shortcuts cuts and they can save so much time and i know it's a game and if that were to happen this would become incredibly difficult but at the same time there are also other maps that have more than one path such as the insane maps that kind of go over the fact that you know there is now more than one way to actually go for the enemies but still it's like why not get off the path and i don't know make a run for the exit that's literally a few hundred feet away from you than just i don't know going on this path that takes you about three hours to get to the end and most likely will end with you being dead you know it's kind of something that you know you just have to think about every once in a while and kind of question it and also find funny on how these infected or whatever are just brain dead enough to just i don't know use basic knowledge to just get off the path number seven at the number three spot we have something that i really do question and that is why don't exactly these towers reload their weapons now for some troops this is very very questionable because i mean like for an example the soldier and militant have very small magazines and after like i don't know 10 ish bullets or something like that you expect them to you know reload or change mags or something like that but instead they just continue firing which makes you wonder if that one mag it has infinite ammo and i know it's a game to where literally if they were to reload this would hurt the game incredibly hard since you know from one second your troop is dealing damage and about to kill an enemy to the next second they're oh, taking like yeah. five seconds to reload a weapon but at the same time what they could just do is at the end of every single wave if there is no enemies on the map the, uh, the all the troops can take like i don't know a three to five second animation to where they just reload it wouldn't change the game at all and if they were to be doing this reload animation and then all of a sudden the next round starts where enemies start you know pouring in 
it will immediately cancel the animation and they'll just continue firing like normal and there is no like hesitation before that and it's just like a little bit of a addition of animation but still it makes you wonder on how like a minigunner is able to just blast these bullets for long for a long long duration without reloading now some towers that can be explained with you know reloading is for an example the accelerator he has this own laser-ish void-ish weapon i don't know that essentially just recharges on, so that's pretty much explained that he does reload or essentially it just cools down number nine this is one that I really do question a lot, and this is the tower's lack of vision. Now, what I'm talking about is, you know that circle that you essentially place in every other, like, path to make sure you get as much area attack damage as possible for that specific troop? Well, why can't the troops see past that range? You know, is like, is, is the only thing they see this? And then when a troop actually enters into their attack range they just immediately pop out of nowhere like something not fades in but more or less just pops out of nowhere it's kind of weird on how these people with specifically assault rifles don't have a much more bigger bigger range to where they can see the enemy coming and you know get prepared but instead they're just standing there being like where's the next enemy i can't see him while there's a zombie literally coming down at him within like five ish seconds you know especially these giant opened maps now for for some troops, this isn't a problem whatsoever, such as example like the cliff unit, such as the mortars, but they have a humongous, humongous range and that makes sense. But for other units on the ground, who for an example is the scout, them having perfectly good eyesight, however, with a small attack range really makes you wonder like why can't they see the enemies coming at them and instead they just stand around acting like literally there's nothing going on, you know? Number one. Check this out. And finally at the number one spot, which is something that doesn't really make sense at all, is how exactly do the melee towers actually get a bigger attack radius with a melee weapon? Now, something you need to know is, well, if a unit is given well, a bigger range with an assault rifle, hey, they can shoot farther, it's nice. However, when a melee unit is given a bigger attack range, it kind of makes you wonder how they are able to hit an enemy without their melee weapon at all touching the enemies, you know? It's pretty much really, really strange. For an example, I am using the Gladiator's Vigilante skin or whatever, and he has this little sickle blade, and somehow he manages to hit an enemy without them even touching it. It's really strange. And it really makes you wonder if he like, I don't know, is running towards the enemy, slashes them, and then just runs back to his original spot, you know? And this is exceptionally weird with whatever skins you have on your other troops, such as an example, the Warden or the Sledger, to where they have, you know, a hammer or a baton or whatever, and with a bigger range, they are somehow able to hit farther away troops with a melee weapon. Maybe they're like throwing it at them, but it doesn't matter. What really does matter is that these melee units are actually doing their job and, you know, actually dealing damage instead of them, I don't know, just swinging at the air and doing nothing, you know? But still, it does make you wonder on how a melee troop gets a bigger attack radius and hits farther with a baseball bat. It's like, did he just go to Dick's store and then just get a literal upgrade of a baseball bat that is essentially a lot longer or something like that, you know? But really, this is TDS, what can you expect for logic?